Hey, Mr. Grotch here, and today we are going to be doing a cook-off. I've got an older timer-based controller smoker, my whiskey still, that thing is awesome, uh, versus the new 1150 series, Pro Series from Pit Boss. We're going to be doing pork butts. They're both uh, virtually the same size. They both have the same rub on them. They're both prepped the exact same way, and they're both going to be cooked at roughly the same temperature. So I'm going to try to target them right around 225 to 250 degrees. Uh, we're going to let those cook up. We're going to pull them off once the internal temp reaches 200 five which is where I'm happy with them and uh, yeah we're gonna see if there's any flavor difference so I'm gonna put my family up against this so they're gonna be doing or they're gonna be the ones judging this so um, I'm gonna kind of do a scorecard between you know which one tastes better to them and see if there is any difference between an older timer based controller and the new pig controller now my theory is that a lot of people with these uh, pellet grills just basically don't know what they're doing. I think they're cranking them up way too hot and they're trying to smoke at, say, 300 degrees or 350. And that's why they're not getting the flavor out of it. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is really that much of a difference. We're going to find out. Um, yeah, I'm going to get on this. I got to get my meat uh, all ready to go and we'll get them on. Talk to you in a minute. All right, so introducing the meats for tonight. Now, the brisket, obviously, is not going to be in competition on this, just the pork butts. But uh, I'm doing a brisket because, well, brisket. So um, got me some chupacabra. I'm going to be trying this. It's the first time, so this is just more of a meal for me for tomorrow and the family. But uh, the pork butts, yeah. So we're going to be putting uh, Kansas City-inspired seasoning rub, the sweet and smoky, on these. I, I found this at Kroger's a long time ago, and I've got a whole ton of spices in the cabinet. i got to say... This is actually outstanding on pork butt. I'm really happy with this. So that's what I'm going to be using on our little face off here and our butt off or cheek off or whatever we want to call it. But anyways, that's what I'm going to put on these and I'm going to get this uh, brisket rubbed down. And now my method for doing pulled pork brisket, everything else, I do fat cap down myself. I leave them in these tin foil pans. That's what I'm going to be doing. And they're going to fully render and just cook in that tin foil pan. Um, I don't do anything to the pulled pork. They literally are going to go on the smokers and they will cook until finished. I don't wrap them. I don't flip them over. I don't do anything. And they turn out phenomenal. At least they always have for me on the whiskey still. So let's see how they turn out on the 1150. Now the brisket's a little bit different. Um, I'm going to let this get up to about 165, maybe 170-ish when it gets into the stall. And then I'm going to actually completely wrap this pan in tin foil. I'm going to put two cans of beef broth in the pan. And I found that works extremely well. I've been really happy with the brisket. It turns out just perfect when I do it that way. That's my method. And all done. We are ready to put them on. Now, one little point on the pork butts. I always take a razor blade and I slice them kind of just all the way across. Then the other way, just do a cross hatch, uh, about a quarter of an inch deep on both of them. That one looks a little deeper, but they're actually the same. So I do that cross hatch and get make sure I get the rub down into those little cuts. So that really helps out the flavor and makes a really good bark. So. All right, I got both smokers fired at the exact same time. The whiskey still absolutely blew the doors off the 1150 when it came to first smoke and getting getting the smoke rolling you can actually see the cloud that it's starting to envelop my entire porch right now so it is firing up and uh that's that's awesome so i can't even tell if the other smoker has started to smoke actually it looks like it has because there's so much smoke coming out of the whiskey still but uh yeah we're gonna go ahead and get this turned up to burn out burn off set it to 350 Ugh, shut that hatch here we go. Now the Pro Series, the 1150, is finally fired properly. So we're going to shut the lid and do the same thing. We're going to get this one warmed up, burnt off. So let's see here. Get the probes all the way so you can see. Now one thing on these pig controllers, which I've already found out, they are ridiculous with their warm-up time. They take forever. So this is probably going to take a little bit on the warm-up. But she is finally flowing now. And good grief, she is putting out some smoke. Now the uh, whiskey still, she's already cleaned up. She's she's heating up quick, so she's already kind of into a clean burn mode. And uh, yeah, it, like I said, that, that little whiskey still with the timer base just blew the doors off this 1150 when it came to first heat. So that was kind of cool. All right, um, I'm going to let these do their thing, let them get up to temp, kind of clean out and uh, clean up a little bit, and we'll go take a look at the meat. I thought you guys might get a kick out of this. So the whiskey still, uh, it is quite a bit smaller than the big 1150. 
I've almost hit 350 degrees already on my external probe. Um, yeah, this thing heats up incredibly fast. That timer base controller just dumps pellets when you crank it up. So that heated up really, really fast. Now this one, if we look at the actual probe temp, I'm at 187. So yeah, 187 and 189 compared to 350 on the still, that's a huge difference in startup time. Not that that really matters or anything, but I really thought you guys might find that uh, kind of curious on there about how quickly the older timer-based controllers heat up, like the Austin XL 1100. Um, it's heat up time to 350 was very, very quick, and a lot of other reviewers actually mentioned that. But I have noticed this PID controller is extremely slow to heat up and get warmed up. I almost wish they had a, a function or a setting or something that you could actually feed more pellets a lot quicker other than just standing here and holding down the, the uh, prime button the entire time to get these things to heat up quicker because they are very, very slow. But anyways, I will quit blabbing. I just thought you guys might find that interesting. I'll talk to you soon. I've got them both dialed in. They're both cooking. I can say one of the big pros of the, uh, well, the Pro Series, look how much space you have in there. That is a 10-pound pork butt with a 15-pound brisket, and I have all the room in the world. Where this is about the same size pork butt in this whiskey still, well, I could put maybe another one underneath, and that's about it, and I'm out of room. So, anyways, that's about the last time I'm going to be opening those for a long time. But anyways, that's what's going on, guys. So, um, yeah, let's uh, see what happens. And it's going to be a long night. These are going to go overnight. It's about 6 p.m. here in Arizona. So tomorrow it's going to be a heck of a good lunch. And we will follow up then. All right, so this is the uh, pork butt that's off the 1150. It got done a little bit quicker than the whiskey still, which is almost there. But let's go ahead and take a look and kind of dig into it. Now this is hot, so let's see what we got. There's our bone. Ah, slipped right out. And I cooked this to 205, by the way. So let's see what we got here. All right. Just shredding right apart. So cool. We will get this all shredded up. And then uh, I'm going to do the same to the one off the whiskey still. And uh, let's see what we uh, end up with flavor wise. So I shred it basically when it's hot, put it in a bowl, cover it in saran wrap. And then I will occasionally, every 15 minutes or so, come in and I'll turn it all over, flip it all over. And that gets the juices distributed perfectly through all the shreds. So not a lot of fat on this one. It all rendered off really, really well. So yeah. Oh, man. These gloves are so thick, it looks like I'm squeezing hard, but I'm not. It's just, this stuff just comes apart. So that's cool. All right. Uh, we'll be back once I get it off the... Uh, off the still and we'll take a look and see what that one looks like color wise and everything after we shred that all right so this is the pork butt out of the still it's a lot darker in texture you can see it from the compared to the other one but as you can already see it's just coming apart so got the bone right out of it we're gonna flip this up man it did take a little bit longer, even though it was not the same temp. I don't know why. It could have just been this one slightly bigger. But uh, pull some of that fat out of there. I don't want all that in there. But it looks awesome. So let's take a look as we shred it. Oh, yeah. It's just coming apart. So next up, we will be doing our taste test and figure out which one tastes better, but I want them to be the same temperature when we do the test since the other one's already cooled off a bit. So, all right, 
That's it. This one looks good though, but like I said, it definitely looks darker than the coming off the PID controller. All right, guys. So the taste test is done, and it was an awesome Sunday. We had some really good meats today. We had some really good pulled pork, and the brisket was absolutely amazing. And uh, so for what you guys have been waiting for, which one tasted better to us? So the Olor Timer Base Controller scored two. And the uh, PID controller scored one vote. So it was a two to one for the timer based controller versus the PID. Um, I scored for the timer based controller. So did my son. We, we liked the bark. We liked a little bit of heavier flavor that came with it. Um, it wasn't drastically different, but there was just enough to where I could tell them, even if I was blindfolded, I would know which meat I was eating in the bark area. Uh, the wife scored for the uh, pig controller, and I asked her, hey, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think? And she says, well, the the bark in that area towards the outside was a lot more moist. That's what she liked. And so everybody's a little different, so that's why she scored it differently. Now, um, again, I mean, I would be totally happy with either of these. They both tasted phenomenal. They were both very, very good, but there was just that little bit of extra edge on that bark area that that the timer controller yielded that I was kind of surprised about. I, I didn't think there'd be that much of a difference. And you could see it. Like when we did the 180 degree side by side, like photo comparison, you could see the difference in color on the bark. So, so and also in the hyperlapse, you could see the whiskey still putting out these giant puffs of smoke. And then you would see the um, pig controller in the 1150 it kind of was just more steady with smoke. Now it did do some puffs. It did, it did kind of smoke up a little bit, but it wasn't those huge puffs that you got out of like on the whiskey still. So I think that was the main difference. Um, let's see, what else did I learn from the day? So I'm trying to think of like what else uh, came of that. So I can say the pig controller with its super razor sharp, like steady temperature, like it's like razor sharp, plus or minus just a couple degrees. I couldn't believe how stable it was. Um, that seemed to cook a lot faster. I mean, the meat on that one was done way faster, a couple hours quicker, in fact, than the whiskey still. And the base temperature at the meat was virtually the same. So I found that really curious that meat cooks so much faster, um, on the PID controller. Uh, it, it could just be that the one in the whiskey still was slightly larger, but I don't think it accounts for that much of a time difference. Um, kind of what else here? I think that's about it. That kind of wraps this up. Uh, I'm definitely not getting rid of my 1150 with the pig controller. I mean, that thing is a beast. I, I love that thing. It's a hell of a machine. Now, the whiskey still, um, it probably is not going to get near the use, but the flavor that thing produces, I'm telling you, that whiskey still is an underrated piece of hardware. It makes amazing food. So if you guys ever can find one used, I, I don't know why it got a, such a bad rap. I think it's just because the rack space is small when they first came out. But it should not have gotten a bad rap. That that thing is a hell of a little pellet smoker and it, it does some amazing food. So if you guys can get one of those or if you want a smaller one, smaller smoker, that is the ticket. Definitely go with the whiskey still. Um, yeah, that's it, guys. I appreciate you watching and I will catch you later. Uh, barbecue on.